Now, we've all been uh, slightly shocked by this story today. Peterborough-based charity Little Miracles. It was broken into on Sunday night, causing thousands of pounds worth of damage. Now, the charity helps support families that have children with additional needs, disabilities and life-limiting conditions. And I actually know... Uh, from a time here at Radio Cambridgeshire, how much work goes in uh, to making this charity uh, work and support families. And I know how devastated that they will all be. Uh, earlier today, our breakfast presenter, Amir Solomon, spoke to the CEO of Little Miracles, Michelle King. And this is a, a clip of their interview from earlier. So yesterday morning, around 3.30, we, we had a break in. And it... It's quite visually quite spectacular, to be honest. Obviously, they, in order to get in, they, they've damaged quite a lot of the glass. So they've smashed through two two of the doors, one in each building, and then they've also they they spent quite a long time trying to get into the in. So a lot of the all the doors have scratches on. It's kind of glass and kind of things that are out of place. We're now all boarded up, which means that we've got lots of children that are going to come in this morning and see that their safe place is all, all boarded up and kind of not their safe place at the moment. And that scares me, obviously. When they bro- when they broke in, the glass broke. It's got into the toy boxes underneath. It's We've got, they've, they've climbed over equipment. Equipment, when they were trying to climb out the building because the alarms were going off, they, they dropped one of the bags. So we found kind of kids' iPads smashed, the, the Xbox smashed. And where they've tried to get out in a rush, and it's it's devastating. It's I've got kiddies coming in today, and we haven't got their equipment. It's we are we are opening as usual from today. Though it's really important for the routine of these children that that we are there. We we remain their safe place. That was Michelle King, the CEO of Little Miracles, speaking to BBC Radio Cambridge's Amir Solomon. One of those affected by the break-in at Little Miracles in Peterborough is Sam. Her 10-year-old son has learning difficulties and is a regular visitor to the charity. And uh, Sam is with us now. Uh, Sam, thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, Could we start by getting to your reaction to to when you heard um, that there had been a a serious break-in of this nature? Oh, it's just it's just terrible. I mean, I suppose it's quite triggering to anyone that's had their house burgled. It's not just the broken glass, and it's, it's the fact that someone's trying to be in there and they they kind of take take it personally. They personally attacked you. Um, they've come into, as Michelle's called it, you know, it's our safe space. We've been with the charity. The charity's been supporting us for ten years now, and to think that they were targeted. They were targeted mm. by someone who wanted to get in and take those specific pieces of equipment which are for disabled children. And, and why is Little Miracles so important to you and your family? They've supported me for 10 years now, ever since my son was born. Um, and without them, I, I just couldn't have emotionally coped. Um, when you've got a child with uh, additional needs, my son is very visually disabled. He has tubes coming out of, on his face stuck to his face he's in a wheelchair um he can't talk so we get stared at a lot um and as any parent any parent out there will know it it hurts when people are staring and not in a nice way that's not to say there are lovely people out there and we have had the most wonderful experiences with the public but it's always the ones you remember where someone was horrible or kids pointed or um you know alex has been bullied he's actually been attacked as well so to get through that, we needed our support network who've given me the confidence to go out, um, live a normal life, which Alex wouldn't have had uh, if we hadn't had the support of Little Miracles. It's not just a centre. They advocate for us. They give us support through the navigating through the NHS and other therapies. So they're amazing, absolutely amazing. And that's what you and Michelle are referring to when you when you say a, a safe space. It's not just a place to go to take your child, but it, it's a community that are, are all in a, in a similar position. So it's a community that they gave me the information that I need and the strength to get through the first 10 years with Alex. And of course, they have new children coming through with the same disabilities and we can impart that on them. I can help then support the new generations coming through. Yeah. But it's it's given him a childhood and he makes his friends. My son has a lot of friends through Little Miracles. 
Well, I was about to say, what what's he like when he's at the centre and he's with his with his friends? Is it is it noticeable that you know he's he's really having a, a good time and enjoying himself? I think it goes further than that. Um, my son was never expected to walk or talk, eat or drink on his own or speak. My son, I have video footage of Michelle herself getting my son to do his first steps, and he now walks thanks to little miracles. So surpassed anything that I could have, have ever imagined. They pushed the boundaries with him. Um, and, you know, I just, as I said, I, it, it's, been a, it's been an absolute lifeline, not just somewhere, you know, 24 hours a day, there's a Facebook page where people can sort of drop their problems and a parent will come in and say, look, I've tried this and I've tried that. And it, it makes you feel like, you know, there are other people out there with you. Something you said uh, will stick with me, which which part of these people must have known what they were doing, who they were targeting at the time. Um, I can't get my, I don't know about you, Sam, but I can't get my head around that or, or what would, you know, motivate someone mm-hmm. or what situation um, they would be. I thought it was interesting hearing Michelle earlier. She was talking about how frustrated and how devastated everyone was, but she was almost also slightly sympathetic to you don't know what situation these people are in or what might force them to, to do something so terrible. How, how do you feel about them? Is it still a, a just unraging anger or... Can you feel a bit of sympathy as as when of what position they might have been or Yeah, I was listening to Michelle early when she said that and I think as as um was rightly said to her, doesn't that just sum up little miracles that, you know, the first in her head she's thinking, Well, come on, they must have been in a place of desperation to do that and we hope that that person gets the the help they need because you know these sort of crimes there's there's always something at the end of it whether it be drugs or just need, the need desperation for money so i think that's real testimony to michelle and to little miracles of how their ethos of how they look at situations like that um it, it's really difficult to be angry isn't it it's ah uh, it's it's a really tough one yeah i am i am because i feel that it was targeted. They knew what was in there. They knew kind of where to get it. And it was, it's a charity for children, for disabled children with life, you know, some of them are life limiting, you know, illnesses. Come on. It's, it's, what can I say? It's not for me to judge, but um, mm. I just like that Michelle put that out there. And I think that really, to me, that is little miracles. That's what it stands for. Beautifully put. And now, of course, the focus of everyone's attention is is to raise funds and to replace what what has been lost. And I, I'm sure, knowing little miracles as we do, Sam, that that will also be a, a raging success as well. Yeah, let's hope so. I mean, I'd urge anyone out there, um, even a pound, anything, just to help, just to help put. Because as as Michelle again mentioned, it's it's not just. Um, the ins- like with, they do have insurance, but the the excess of these things is thousands and thousands of pounds. For example, yesterday, the with little miracles, they will hit the ground running as they did in COVID. They took the whole service online within 24 hours when we were all in lockdown. And here, immediately, the break in was at 3 a.m. by after school Monday. My son was down the bowling alley where they took them out just so that they didn't have to see the devastation and they didn't get upset. They took them out bowling. It was like the best night out ever. You know, when you don't plan those nights mm. out and you have a great yeah. one, it was like that yesterday. So that, and and but unfortunately, that costs money and a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure the people of of Peterborough and that little miracles community will, will come up. Trumps, thank you for taking us through oh, all that, Sam. You. It's fascinating um, to hear you talk of that first hand experience and the impact that the charity uh, has had. And I, I don't doubt it. Uh, having met Michelle uh, King, who's the CEO there, for a moment, it sounds um, an incredible place to be. And we send our best as well to Alex and his mates. And hopefully, all will be well at Little Miracles soon. If you are able to help in any way, you can find more details at www.littlemiraclescharity.org.uk Check out their social media as well for more information and as uh, the people of Peterborough come to the uh, to their aid, I'm sure on BBC Radio Cambridgeshire we will keep across it as well. 